Hey guys, I'm back and with another spreadsheet. I am just cranking these out now. I've just been evaluating everything I can in this game. Um, so the next thing I wanted to look at in a little bit more detail is the real-time arena because there were some major changes made to it today. Uh, I was planning on doing this kind of video last week and I had the spreadsheet all set up, uh, but I never uh, made the video and launched it. Um, I don't know, I just never got around to it. <laughs> and. Uh, they changed all the values of these uh, quests, right? The daily missions, and the weekly missions, and the point values and stuff. So I had to update it. But I've updated it now with the new information that we have. And what I've done is I've tried to evaluate how well can we actually uh, get through the 100 levels of rewards and stuff for the month of RTA. And then also, you know, what is really required for us to do and can we skip any of the less interesting uh, RTA objectives? That's the main question I'm trying to answer. So uh, you can see here there are certain different things now. Um, I've been talking to some of my friends just to hear what they had. And some of them got like controllers, some of them got hero abilities. Uh, some of them got like specific characters like She-Hulk is one of mine and Shatterstar is the other. Um, these are weeklies. And then the individual uh, daily ones, I got Graviton and Vision, but there's also, I had a class one for Brotherhood, um, so I did that one, that was fairly easy, because you can do a whole team like that, it's pretty quick. Um, but these individual ones are kind of a pain in the ass, to be honest with you, uh, just because, like, I would never really bring Vision to this game mode unless I absolutely had to, or unless they expand the, the ban list significantly to where it's like, oh, well now I am getting into like my C-list PvP characters and these ones would actually make the cut or something. But they did expand the ban list, so let's look at that. There's five now instead of three. Um, I still think that this is uh, woefully uh, underserving the PvP game mode itself. Uh, in a banned classic a PvP match, you ban six, right? It's three and three minimum and even then there are still a ton of s tier characters to choose from that make these matches pretty interesting and that's a mix of other supporting and synergy type characters that help make them better or uh, provide other options for those fights that's primarily what drives pvp and being competitive and interesting is the strategy behind those selections the time to pick and select those people and then use them effectively throughout the match in a real-time setting. In this game mode, we don't get any of that, really. We're just picking five guys from a roster of whatever is not banned and going at it, and they could have the exact same group. Um, and just, you know, it, and then the other thing is, it's like we're going for these objectives, which, you know, they don't really, they don't really encourage people to win. They encourage people to play because rewards are so damn good, right? I mean, let's not overlook this. I want all these rewards in order to stay a high-level competitive player to some degree. Uh, maybe not very high-end, but, you know, above average at least. And I think that everybody realizes that the Battle Pass is essentially uh, a must-buy now because of all the gear that they put in it. I mean, there's like 50 tier 15 pieces of gear in here. So what I'm saying is, is this is a really important piece of the game now. This is an important piece of the DD4 puzzle as far as gearing and, and go, uh, getting to and through DD4 goes. And I think any high level player is going to want to get this battle pass as well as the 100 objectives. However, I would say that through my analysis, uh, you do not need to buy the $20 higher level pass that gives you 30 levels. And I want to show you why through a spreadsheet. Let me flip over here to what I have. So what I built is this little RTA spreadsheet. It's in Dutch's Resources and Sheets spreadsheet, which is linked in the bottom, and it's in all of my uh, videos now. Um, I updated a couple of the URL redirects that I have to this sheet, uh, including like the Emma Milestone Calculator, uh, Dark Dimension, Node Wave Drops, and all that stuff. All that's contained here. Um, so if you'd like to see any of my past work and event calculators and other things, uh, feel free to go and check out those sheets. This is my RTA, just rough draft, just throwing it together and trying to figure out like how many points do we need to finish and max rewards. And that's the first question. So it's 100 levels and each level is 250 experience points or tokens is what they're called in the game here. And 
you need 25,000 of them over a four week period. You can see up here in the top right corner of the game that they actually put in the timer here is 27 days and 16 hours. It's 28 days, so it's going to be a full four week rotation on these uh, Mojo Mayhem events, which is important to note. Um, so what I did was I set up here, this is kind of similar to my Emma calculator, which is like, okay, throughout a week, let's say max weekly tokens, you can get 5,700. Um, daily tokens could be 650, right? So the idea is, what if we just planned out what we were going to get each day or week or whatever, and use that as a way of, of looking into the future and saying, well, do we need to get all these objectives, right? So the first thing we want to do is look at the dailies. And so over here, I have all the dailies. I have the token value that they cost uh, or give you um, for completing them. So each day we're going to get, you know, complete one match. We're going to get win one match. We're going to get win three matches, five, 15, and 25 knockouts. Then there's going to be two single character, 10 ability uses for 50 each. And then one 30 ability use for 18 types usually a team trait for synergy like a brotherhood or shield or uh, fantastic four or pym or something like that has been pretty popular and those are worth 100 so if you were to do all of those in one day you get 650 tokens right so over a week span of seven days you'll actually get 4550 points if you do every one of those every single day right well that's a lot of points considering we only need 25,000 in four weeks right and that's just one week of dailies and that's not even considering the weeklies. so the weeklies are worth a lot more but they take a lot more effort and time right so 150 ability uses of a specific type so uh mine this week were uh mystic brawler and uh villain or no protector sorry and then uh the 600 types which are very similar i got uh villain as well which is uh not bad and mystic so i have mystic 150 and 600 which is double dipping which is nice it makes it easier and then i also got uh, brawler uh, as one of them so um, not a whole lot of overlap there but that's okay it's nice to have at least one that overlaps um, and then you got 225 knockouts which is worth 1350 and then you get the 50 single character uh, abilities which i got this week was she hulk and shatterstar for me so i'll do the shatterstar ones probably and maybe skip she hulk we'll see so I just wanted to show um, what the values of those are, which is 5,700 in total for the week, if you do all of them, right? So that means for the entire week, if you were to max everything every day and the week, I mean, you're already at a little over 10,000 points. And that's about, you know, a third of the way to 25,000, which is what you need for the four weeks. Well, that's not so bad. So the ceiling for this is actually 41,000 points in total if you were to do every single one of these every single day for all four weeks right so that gives us a little wiggle room so my thought here with this sheet was what if we were just to look at the ones that are the least desirable to complete each day or week kick them out and then try to plot out like how many points that would still net us and see if we're still above the 25,000 mark or at least a little bit comfortably above it because you never know you might forget to play one day or you might skip some uh, it just, you know, you can't guarantee that you're going to get 100% of these, but you can do pretty well. So my th first thought was, well, I hate these single character abilities because they are rarely characters that I would ever bring to PvP. So I'm just going to check these two boxes here, and you could do the same if you make a copy of this sheet and you want to plot it out yourself. So what that's going to do is it's going to set these to zero. So that takes 100 points out of my dailies, and you can see here it's going to remove the 100 points from these guys over here. Now. Um, that's not so bad, right? That's uh, that's gonna drop me, you know, 2,800 points over the course of the four weeks, and that's gonna bring me down to 38,200. Well, that's not so bad. I mean, that's still 13k above uh, what we need. So let's look down here and see what else could we drop? Could we drop one of these 600 type abilities? Like maybe I don't want to do. Oh, I definitely don't want to do She-Hulk 50 abilities. So let's drop that. That's only 225. Um, but let's just assume that I'm going to get She-Hulk every week for the next four weeks, and I'm not going to do it. Honestly, I hate doing these individual character ones, so I'm just going to kick that out. And I'm still at 37k, so I could actually kick out both of them. Uh, although I like Shatterstar, so I'll probably do that one. Um, <laughs> it just kind of depends on what pops up, right? Uh, so I can kick those out. I could also kick out one of these 600 abilities, because you know what? I just don't feel like doing 600 protector uh, 
you know, turns or something, or brawler turns. I don't know. Whatever, you, whatever it is, maybe you just don't feel like it. So I can knock out all these ones that are checked and set them to zero and say, I'm never going to complete them for four weeks. And I'm still at 32,000 points completed, right? So let's take out another 600, you know? Maybe I don't feel like doing that one either. And I'm still at 29K, right? I can knock out one of these uh, 150s as well, just to be safe. And look at that. I'm still at 27,000 points. So if you think about it, the worst part of RTA is going in there with a shitty team with shitty characters that you don't want to use that you would never choose for PvP because they're shitty and they aren't meant for PvP. And having to sit there and protect their dumb asses from getting blown away and get to hit that button once or twice a round for 10 or 50 times in a week and it's just to me it's just it's boring it's lame it's not fun it's 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 just it's a very very bad way of playing the game to me and in fact it takes it from being a game and it makes it a chore and that's the biggest issue i have with this game mode and it's the reason why i'm planning on taking a step back from it over the next month or so uh, I really just, I've lost interest because there's so much tied up in the rewards for this particular game mode that I'm doing a spreadsheet right now to show you how little you have to play it so that you don't have to spend as much time on it because it sucks that much. This game mode is absolute trash. And it's so, not because of the game itself. There's nothing wrong with the game. It has everything to do with these stupid objectives that force you to play a PvP mode that should be competitive and should be rewarding you for winning and killing enemies. And instead it's making you sit there and play fucking patty cake with a bunch of idiots going around and trying not to kill each other so you can get that one or two more abilities on some character that you would never use if you didn't have to. So that's why I think this is just real-time patty cake mode. Because that's what you're looking for. You're looking for somebody with a crap team or you know a non-aggressive team that's going to allow you to sit there and go through your abilities on auto for a while and not kill each other. I mean, that's the ideal situation to get these done and just be done with it so you don't have to do the mode, right? So now I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, well, I maybe mean, it's not so bad, right? I could just get in there, get my 25 knockouts a day, win three matches, uh, and try to use some of the character types for the weekly and and be all right but it still feels a little unfulfilling because i'm skipping out on rewards for ions and training materials which actually i'm getting kind of low on my myself uh, trying to get to dd4 level 80 costs a lot of training mats actually <laughs> so these are pretty useful um, if you can get them but uh the fact is that's where i'm at with this mode that's how shitty this game mode is and i hate it and i hate the fact that i even had to sit here and think about like well how do i do less of it because that's where we're at. Even with the changes that they made, they've not addressed the issue. The fundamental issue with RTA is the objectives and the way that they make you play the game is incorrect. You should be rewarded for getting kills, you should be rewarded for winning, and you should be happy about that because that's what feels good. When I play PvP with people, I want to I want to win. I want to kill them. I get the, the, the thing. That's the whole game. Like, there's nothing else. I'm not sitting there like, oh man, I need to get hella three turns because if I do, that's going to give me bonus points. No, nobody gives a shit about that in PvP. I don't care how many turns you take. I don't care if I kill a guy right off the bat. If I don't win the match, it doesn't make a difference if he didn't take a turn with his hella or graviton or she-hulk or whatever it doesn't matter that's the, and that's the fundamental issue it's not an arena game mode it's a press button game mode and that's what makes it a chore and a problem and that's why so many people don't like it and are rejecting it as a game mode and just saying you know what i can watch tv hit hit auto and just let it do whatever the hell it wants that's not a game if I don't want to play it, if I'm actively trying to avoid playing it and just have it on in the background and try to ignore it as much as possible while watching TV, that's not a game. That's a chore. And that's what this has become. And they've made it worse by making the abilities uh, the primary factor here because now people are just going for turns instead of actually being competitive and trying to kill each other. Um, I was having way more fun with this last week when I was just screwing around trying to get kills with my long shot Shatter Star because I like those characters and they're fun to use and I didn't need any more of the objectives to finish the milestones. So that's where I'm at with this. I, uh, I really don't like it. I don't like the time sink of it. Um, it's, it's just a lot of effort to get good rewards for sure, but 
the time you spend there is unrewarding and unfulfilling because the objectives make you play a way that you wouldn't want to play if you just had free reign to use this mode for your own purposes. And so that's, I think, the biggest problem. And the last point I would make is just to think, you know, this is a combat strategy game, right? Turn-based combat strategy. And when it's supposed to be about, you know, winning fights and doing the right things at the right times to make your enemy, you know, in a, or put them in a bad position, right? If you're trying to do that, you're, you're doing well, you win those fights, that feels good, right? But if I'm trying to do, well, man, I don't want to kill that guy because he's going to quit out and then leave and I'm not going to get any credits and kills. Um, I better attack over here and hope... Uh, he doesn't kill me first, so I can keep the fight going and give him some turns, and I get some turns. And like, that's not a game. That's just that's just the dumbest way to play a strategy and tactics combat fighter. And it's just that's what's unfulfilling and stupid about it. So, anyway, I'm done ranting. I guess that's enough for tonight. Uh, but yes, real time patty kick arena is a piece of crap, and this is how you can check to see how little you need to play it. So, uh, I've kind of shown here, you can skip a lot of the objectives. I'm certainly going to skip the 10 single character object objectives every day, unless it's somebody I would normally use, like an X-23 or something like that. Um, and otherwise, uh, I'm just going to try to avoid this mode as much as possible. I hope you do too, and I hope you give Fox Next and Scopely a lot of terrible feedback about it, because that's the only way that this is going to change. The other thing I really need to point out, and I forgot to mention this, is this also illustrates how little of importance it is to buy the higher level $40 Battle Pass. Um, you really don't need it if you're willing to spend a little bit of time, and I've shown you can skip about, I don't know, a third of the objectives and still make it. So uh, unless you're really, really, really strapped for time, um, you know, that's uh, another feature of this spreadsheet is showing you exactly how much you actually need to do and how little you have to do of it. So uh, cheers, guys. I hope you enjoy your RTA patty cake sessions. Uh, I know I haven't, so I hope you all are doing better than me.